Uh, welcome and uh, good morning, everyone, again. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Nguki Kimani uh, from the Regional Center of uh, Resources for Development. And uh, we are indeed very excited to have you all on, all on board on this uh, event. Uh, thank you for finding time and uh, honoring our invitation to this uh, kickoff meeting uh, for the OFESA project. OFESA seeks to provide support towards the establishment of a forest observatory in the Eastern and Southern Africa region. Uh, I'll be moderating this event and uh, it's divided into, two, into three parts. One, uh, remarks uh, from the partners. Then uh, secondly, we'll hear details about the project. And uh, thirdly, we'll get uh, an opportunity to provide any questions or comments and any feedback uh, that uh, you might be having. Uh, before we start, I would like to highlight a couple of things. Uh, ensure that your mic is on mute unless uh, you're the one uh, who is uh, talking. And then uh, there will be an opportunity for question and answer at the tail end uh, of our presentation. Then uh, you can make use of the chat box in case you have any question uh, during out uh, uh, the presentations that uh, will be made. Uh, lastly, it's also to indicate that uh, we are recording this particular session and uh, we'll share this uh, recorded uh, feed uh, to all participants uh, as well as the presentations that uh, will be made. Um, having said that, I will go directly to the first part of, uh, of, 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 our, of our event, which is the introductory, uh, introductory comments from the partners. Uh, we'll start uh, with C4, uh, followed by RCMRD, then uh, the EU. So that is the order in which we'll follow. Uh, over to you, uh, Robert from C4. <clears throat> Thanks, Kimani, and um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. And my apologies uh, if you see me in my car, but it's uh, <clears throat> thanks to the traffic uh, here, you can see. Uh, and uh, it's really a pleasure to, to be with you. Uh, it's a pity that we cannot be all together somewhere in Nairobi or, or in the region, but the situation being what it is, <clears throat> it, it, it's a great, uh, I think, satisfaction to see this project starting. It's the continuation of the work that we started with the, the regional center. And, and thanks to the good work that, that we did in, in the first phase, we have this, this uh, phase of development of the observatory, and it is something that is becoming more and more important given the, the situation, given the whole issue linked to uh, re reduced emission linked to deforestation and degradation, uh, given the importance of forests for food, given the issue of refugees and degradation. So I think it's a, it's a very timely moment, and, and I'm sure that if we manage this particular project well, uh, we have a quite quite a long road uh, ahead of us in terms of achieving a better management of the forest of in southern Africa. So thanks a lot, and uh, I will not speak more, so you, you don't hear the background noise. Uh, and uh, thank you very much again, and uh, I'm looking forward for the kickoff launch. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, DG RCMRD. Thank you very much, Ndugi. Uh, Robert from Kipo and colleagues from the European Union, uh, I wish to share the same pleasure uh, for being able to have this occasion. Uh, we've looked forward to this day for quite some time uh, since the first phase. Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a, a day of happiness, but at the same time, a day when uh, I wish one of the uh, people who are very much behind this program, uh, the next the late Dr. Esther Mangi was with us. I remember I introducing this program uh, with the, the director, the director general of uh, C4, and working very hard to see how we can be able to progress from the first phase uh, to the current phase. So in a way, uh, I'm very proud that uh, her effort was not in vain and we can be able to continue the work going forward. Having said that, I wish to thank uh, C4 uh, for the partnership, the European Union for the continued support uh, for this technical work, uh, because I mean, it's not very many donors that are willing to invest their resources in technical and analytical work uh, that really has huge impact, but not necessarily very visible. So the importance of the observatory from our first engagement is very clear. And having been personally involved in natural resources management in my previous job, I know how important it's going to be to government authorities uh, in their management of resources, both for international reporting, but also for management uh, of the natural resources they have in their countries. 
So RSMLD is very happy that uh, the program is focused on the region that consists of our member states, uh, which uh, run all the way from Sudan to South Africa. So my hope is that uh, with the, the current engagement in the five countries, in the future we can be able to extend because I believe virtually each of our country, each of the countries in our region require, needs this, this resource. So thank you to everybody who is participating. Uh, I've seen uh, Steve from JRC and others uh, who uh, support, continue supporting us uh, in terms of technical uh, assistance. So we hope we can be able to deliver a good product. So thank you to the technical team and your colleagues. Uh, let's keep doing good, uh, good work and hopefully we deliver what our member states require. So for the participants, uh, this resource is for you. And I hope you can be the vanguard of the initiative in your countries. So it doesn't just remain as something invested in, but not fully utilized. Its utilization is what will make us proud of the effort we've put in. So it's my honor once again to be here on behalf of RSMLD uh, at the kickoff of this meeting. And I wish everybody a fruitful deliberations and uh, successful work as we move forward in the implementation. Thank you very much. Thank you, DJ RSMRD. Uh, over to you, Mayra, from the EU delegation. Thanks, Ngugi. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, Director Emmanuel. Sorry we missed you last week when we came to your office, but we had a very good tour, thanks. Um, and uh, good morning, Dr. Robert Nassi from C4. Uh, and hello also, um, I think it's Stephen from JRC. I think we've met before, so nice to, nice to see you. I just wanted to also present apologies from uh, Philippe Maillot from, from Brussels, from the Directorate General for International Partnerships. He's not able to attend this morning, but I'll also feed back to him if there's anything. Um, so very briefly to say um, I, I'm very happy to be part of the kickoff meeting for the Forest Observatory, uh, which aims at enabling Ken Kenya, Uganda, Mozambique, Ethiopia and Tanzania to track performance under several obligations, including the Paris Agreement and AFR 100. Um, in many cases, our governments have responded to the negative impacts of deforestation and forest degradation through landscape restoration and on-farm agroforestry, but um, often in the absence of information on the state of existing forest ecosystems and hotspots. So I think <clears throat> this forest observatory will really be useful to frame all of the actions that are the, the member governments are, um, are targeting. Uh, for us, um, it seems that the OFESA program is starting as an opportune time, as it will really enable the governments and stakeholders to monitor the state of implementation, um, in particular under the Paris Agreement and AFR 100, so it should be very useful. As for the EU delegation in Kenya, uh, it's, it's also an opportune time. We're planning our next seven year uh, strategy uh, with Kenya. Uh, this is also the case for the whole of the, of the European Commission. So we're in our next budget period for 2021 uh, to 2027. And uh, we're looking at the big priorities over the next coming years together with our partner countries or partner regions. And um, having the, the observatory will really enable us to monitor and target hotspots. Um, I think I'll add a few more words about the programming phase of the seven year budget period, especially as uh, Philippe Maillot is not here. So I think it's, uh, it's maybe of interest to the various people here. Um, I think, uh, as, as most of you will be aware, for the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, uh, one of the biggest priorities has been the Green Deal and making the EU carbon neutral by 2050. And this also will strongly be reflected in our development cooperation and international partnerships more broadly. Um, so. Uh, it's one of the top priorities uh, and it's one of the most, most important things that we'll also be targeting in our upcoming strategy. Um, I think uh, in terms of the Kenya delegation, uh, our, our, we've been looking at a proposed biggest focal area 
for of uh, natural capital and resilience. So again, really framing the, the Green Deal as a key element of what we want to address in Kenya, of course, together with, with other priorities, which, which I won't mention here now. Um, but equally, uh, if we look at regional interventions, uh, which are being programmed, of course, uh, mainly through our colleagues in Brussels with our inputs. Um, there's, uh, there's definitely a look at regional approaches to biodiversity conservation, uh, transfrontier wildlife management and uh, trafficking prevention, um, transfrontier uh, ecosystems and landscapes conservation and so on. So again, these, um, these will quite a benefit from this, this type of program. Um, as I already mentioned, we were actually, by coincidence, uh, uh, my team and I visited ICMRD last week. So um, we managed to already see the regional hub with IUCN that's in place. So we're confident that the cutting edge technologies offered by ICMRD will really be able to, um, launch, to launch this OFESA program very well. Um, that said, the implementation will not be without challenges. At national level, it will be important to map hotspots and then, uh, and then hopefully <laughs> consequently catalyze responses. And even more challengingly, I think at transfrontier level, the question will be how we can produce outputs which can, which can encourage cross-border action. So I think we want the data not to remain just data, but also to be used for policy, by policymakers. And we hope that, um, that, of course, we can also support in that, in that part of the, of the program objectives. Um, finally, again, from the Kenya delegation level, but I think I can speak also from my Brussels colleagues. Um, oh, sorry, I'm seeing a message to myself. I'm going to skip that. Um, uh, finally, from the Kenya delegation and our Brussels colleagues, I think we're um, we're really ready and available to link this program to uh, to our other existing programs. For example, the cross regional wildlife program. Uh, for example, the regreening Africa with trees program, which have a nice uh, application for monitoring uh, landscape restoration and so on. So we're um, we're really available. Of course, you already have all the contacts of IUCN, SOS, and so on. But uh, in case there's any um, any further facilitation or enabling we can do of linking with partners, we're, we're here. So with these remarks, I once again express our gratitude for your invitation and wish you successful deliberations today. Thanks. Thank you very much uh, uh, for those uh, inspiring uh, words. Uh, we'll jump uh, into the second part of the event, which uh, we look at uh, three things. One, uh, details of uh, the project. Uh, then secondly, we'll also hear what officer is building up uh, from the prototype that uh, was done in 2018. Then thirdly, we'll hear some uh, elements on how communication and the visibility of some of the products uh, officer will be, uh, be, uh, will, be uh, will be designing uh, will be made. Uh, over to you, uh, Ivy and, um, and, and Douglas. Thanks, Ngugi. Uh, and thanks everyone for joining. My name is Douglas Buire, uh, working with the Center for International Forest Research uh, based in Nairobi, and we're working with the team and everyone for on this project. So I'll uh, highlight uh, with my colleague Ivy about the project and uh, what activities we'll be doing with our partners on the project. Next, please. Next. So this project, uh, basically, we are building up on the prototype uh, of the Eastern and Southern Africa that uh, has been existing, that uh, has been hosted at the regional center. And uh, the rationale is to support the improvement and uh, implementation of this particular prototype uh, from the first one by having a reliable system that will assist countries to report on their various obligations. And uh, one of these is the climate obligations that uh, we has been highlighted uh, even before. So one of the key aspects that are required for managers at the country levels is uh, reliable data that uh, can inform uh, management, management decisions in order to manage landscapes at uh, regional, national, and even at the local level. So strengthening these uh, monitoring systems is really key for this, to inform these management decisions. 
So basically, uh, one of the key uh, barriers or various barriers that uh, have existed that uh, have hampered uh, monitoring systems is limited technical capacity uh, in various uh, forestry agencies or partners uh, where maybe there's not enough capacity to collect data on forest uh, and other resources. Also lack of capacity to analyze this data and to identify the trends that are emerging from uh, this data. And also sometimes there's that negative attitude uh, where uh, which hampers data sharing and therefore does not enable sharing or analysis, which can finally lead to related decisions. Next, please. So based on these uh, limitations or these barriers, this project will support the national and regional uh, tracking of the performance under the various obligations. And one of these is the Paris Agreement and the AFRI 100. So that's basically what the current project will support. And uh, the project will be for a period of 36 months uh, from August uh, 2020 uh, last year, and it will go up to August 2023. We are covering five countries. Uh, uh, these are Ethiopia, Kenya, Mozambique, Tanzania, and Uganda. And uh, we also contributing to the SDGs, uh, on, on, on which are highlighted there. So I leave uh, my colleague uh, Ivy, who will uh, go into the details about the key activities and what we implement. Ivy, thank you. Thank you, Douglas. My name is Ivy Amugune, and I work with uh, Center for International Forestry Research, and I am part of the OFESA project. So concerning the background of OFESA, this second phase builds up from recommendations received from the first phase. And um, the key elements identified for a functioning observatory system is governance structure, uh, which includes the rules, data sharing policies, frameworks, ETC. Uh, we have system of in incentives, we have funding, we have capacity building, and lastly, collaborations. Next slide, please. In governance, structure, in governance structures, we'll be focusing on data sharing policy and frameworks, which will, uh, which will show on mechanisms to control access and accountability, ETC. And we'll also look at memorandum of understandings, contracts, which is needed for coordination and collaborations, uh, specifying roles and responsibilities for the different actors in the data chains, ETC, and also for data con uh, contribution by various actors to the observatory, and also communication strategy. Next slide, please. The second, which is system of incentives, uh, we'll have to motivate the actors to contribute data, and this will be based on stakeholders and actors needs. Uh, for example, as shown in the slide, we'll address pressing policy and management issues. We'll have value addition aspects, which include country specific indicators or thematic, uh, thematic areas, ETC. Uh, next slide, please. Funding, uh, we'll look at data generation process, capacity building, uh, facilitation of meetings to like supplement supplementing their budgets, especially for data that isn't available, and also collaborate uh, collaboratively uh, mobilizing funds to support this. And then on capacity building, which will be tailored to to actors' needs, we'll um, look into training, uh, upgrading existing equipment, learning platform assistance with recruiting new staff, ETC facilitation to attend conferences, exchange visits to partner stands for learning, ETC, ETC. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Collaborations, we look into engagement with actors uh, and involve them 
from the beginning, which will look, uh, which will look at a bottom up approach. And this will look into developing relationships, building trust and goodwill, creating awareness about the project. Um, it will also look into a network for data generation and analysis, which will um, look into identifying and work with working with identifying and working with actors with authority and power to mobilize these other actors and their agenda, particularly with uh, political bodies to create this network, uh, which will include multiple um, actors at various levels and will have mandated institutions in the sector for continuous data flow and uh, lining activities, etc., etc., for the plans of the institutions. And then uh, we look into linkages with uh, similar initiatives to reduce duplication of efforts. Next slide, please. For key results, we'll have two results. Um, the first result will be um, development of a sustainable governance framework. And the second one will be um, human capacities in terms of management. Use, use of environmental information uh, to be strengthened. Um, ETC, ETC. Um, next slide, please. Um, this matrix just shows um, the activities against the respective results and the expected outputs, um, of which I believe are to cut time short. You'll personally look into them later on. And the last thing is the theory of change. Uh, for the theory of change, for all these activities, we aim at having impact on availability of uh, better regular and more systematic information on forest trends of threats and better environmental and uh, socioeconomic uh, decision-making and reduction of uh, deforestation uh, and reduction in deforestation. So um, for the theory of change, I'll leave it to my colleague Douglas to delve into it. Thank you. Thank you, Ivy. So just basically uh, one final comment that uh, I'd like to make is that uh, we have a, a monitoring and evaluation framework that has been developed that we use to monitor our theory of change and also on how to implement the daily uh, activities under the project. So to make it a living, uh, that the theory of change to be uh, a living document, we have um, m and framework that we're using. So basically that ends uh, our presentation about the project. Uh, I will take back to Google. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Ivy and uh, Douglas, uh, for that uh, overview of uh, the project. Uh, we'll now hear from Eric, uh, who will uh, talk about uh, what Officer is uh, is building up on uh, from the first phase, which was done from 2016 to 2018. Uh, over to you, Eric. Thank you, Ngogi, and uh, uh, the rest of have joined the meeting. My name is Eric Obwile. I work at uh, RCMRD, that is Regional Center for Mapping, of resources for development, and I am also part of the OFSA, OFSA project. So uh, OFSA 2 is actually uh, building from the OFSA 1 project that was done between the year 2016 and 2018. Uh, next slide. Uh, OFSA 1 had actually established uh, relationships and partnerships uh, with the organizations and institutions in the member countries, in the, in the countries that were involved in the project. And uh, these institutions are, uh, are, in Kenya, we have the Kenya Forest Services, uh, Kenya Forest Service, uh, which is a focal point institution uh, that uh, link with the project. Uh, then the second one uh, in Uganda, we have uh, National Forest Authority, that is uh, also the focal point institution. In Tanzania, you have the Tanzania Forest Service, which is a focal point institution in Tanzania. Uh, in Mozambique, we have the National Directorate of Forests. And uh, Officer 2 is actually uh, seeking to establish 
uh, relationship and uh, collaboration with the Ethiopian Environment uh, and Forest, Forest and Climate Change Commission uh, institution in, in Ethiopia, which will be the focal point institution uh, in regards to this project. Uh, over and above these institutions, uh, the project will also establish uh, other, other relationships uh, with the other uh, institutions. We have other institutions actually in the Ministry of uh, Environment in uh, those respective countries that already have some kind of relationship with um, the implementing partners. And uh, the project will take advantage of uh, the existing relationships to establish new collaborations with those other institutions in the Ministry of uh, Environment. Uh, next slide. Uh, what is contained in uh, the observatory is that uh, Officer One had actually developed a prototype, uh, which actually uh, uh, provided very cr critical and crucial information. Uh, and uh, for example, there is information about uh, the trends in the forest cover. As you can see, there's a graph there that is showing uh, uh, the forest cover uh, between 1990 and 2015. So Officer Two will be seeking to actually update uh, that uh, that uh, information about the forest cover uh, to be current uh, to uh, up to uh, this year, which is uh, and uh, this year, which is 2021, and the other years that are coming. Uh, the other critical information that uh, the project is uh, providing, the observatory we have is actually uh, the link between the forest and the people. So. Uh, the prototype actually uh, provided very critical information about the importance of, uh, of the forests to people in terms of employment and even the economic value of the forests to the, even the individual countries. So um, Officer Two will seek to uh, uh, dig into this kind of uh, research and even provide more information about uh, how the forests are impacting the people people's livelihood. Then another important information is about um, the drivers of deforestation and degradation. So uh, Officer One had actually uh, uh, identified the drivers of deforestation and degradation. Uh, those drivers are there, we have agriculture, commercial logging and charcoal, wood fuels, forest fires, infrastructure extensions, and population growth. Officer Two will seek actually to uh, do more research about the drivers of deforestation and degradation. And this information is very important in actu actually helping to manage the forests and to make decisions that relate to uh, forest, forest management and conservation. Uh, other kinds of information that, uh, uh, there are so many other information that the project will seek to, to provide that we have not mentioned, but uh, the small information about uh, the forest that will be provided uh, by the project. Next slide, please. So the project will actually uh, uh, link with the countries. Uh, over and above the, the regional focus of the project, uh, the project will also uh, link with individual countries and uh, ask them to identify uh, the exact needs and challenges that they have in, in, relates to, in relation to, in, uh, to forests. Uh, we have some of the forests or parts of the forests in country in those countries uh, that may have very high interest. So the project will actually ask those countries to uh, su to suggest or give uh, th those kinds of forests which we have called hotspots. Uh. So the project will map those hotspots and provide very uh, uh, critical information that the countries can then use in decision making in regards to forest management. Next slide, please. Uh, Officer Two is actually seeking to partner with the uh, existing projects, most of which are being funded by uh, European Union. And uh, implementing, uh, implementing partners of Officer Two are actually two. We have the C4 and RCMRD. And uh, C4 and RCMRD actually uh, have actually links with some of the projects that are. Uh, uh, doing at the moment. And these projects are like Biopharma. Uh, Biopharma's focus is actually on uh, protected areas. 
which has a very close relationship with the forests. So uh, the officer project will actually uh, seek to is seeking to uh, partner with the biopharma project, and will benefit from even the, the, the implementing partners of biopharma who are uh, IUCN, who are uh, involved in actually conservation of environment. We are also linking with the UN WCMC. We have the EU GRC, EGAD, IOC, ESC, and SADC. And even the, the national governments of the 24 participating countries of the, of the Biopharma project. So uh, by partnering with the Biopharma, Professor will actually uh, benefit so much in terms of the, of the relationships and the collaborations with these uh, organizations. Uh, Professor is also partner with uh, OFAC, uh, including uh, <clears throat> the partners of the OFAC who are uh, COMIFAC, RAPAC, and uh, EUJRC, and even uh, RIFESC uh, organizations, and therefore will even benefit from uh, what they have to offer in regards to forestry, man forest management, and conservation. Uh, the other project that Professor will be partnering with, uh, will, will be partnering with is uh, GMS and Africa. GMS and Africa is a project that uh, uh, seeks or focuses on land uh, productivity and wetlands. And uh, as you know, wetlands and the land productivity relates uh, or they have very close relationship with the uh, with forests. And therefore partnering with, uh, with uh, this project will actually help Professor in actually uh, delivering on the project. And it will be these organizations and projects are very critical in the success of the project. Uh, with that, that ends my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric, uh, for that. Uh presentation on the, where we are building up uh, from the first phase. We'll hand over to Arceli Gonzalez uh, to talk about how the communication and visibility of the project will be achieved. Over to you, uh, Arceli. Thank you, Kuki. Good morning, everyone. Um, as we said, my name is Arceli Gonzalez and I'm responsible for the communications of this project. Um, I won't bore you presenting you the whole communications and visibility strategy. If you're curious, however, please do not hesitate to contact me and um, I can share with you and we can exchange. Uh, so for today's presentation, I'm just going to present a couple of highlights um, that I think uh, are important for you to, to know um, and what we're planning to do. Um, perhaps the most important is a flagship publication of FESA um, that is foreseen under this project. Uh, this will be a key output um, that will be co-developed in collaboration with all partners. Um, and the aim is to have a single publication with comparable multi-country information on priority themes that can provide a regional overview of the state of the forest. Um, so, um, well, the structure and the timeline and um, the process to develop um, this uh, publication is not yet set. Um, we are planning consultations with countries, regional economic communities, and the EU to make sure that this is a participative, participative um, uh, process and that everybody's uh, needs um, are integrated into this publication. Um, one thing that, that is worth highlighting under the prototype of OFESA, um, we did a brief um, overview of the main challenges uh, facing Eastern African forests. Uh, which can be accessed, here you have a screenshot, but it can be accessed on OFESA's website. Um, so the idea, um, that also gives us a, a baseline from which we know already um, what information, uh, what regional information is available or not. That gives us a, a basis to build on um, and develop this more comprehensive um, publication. Um, and this is, high, is inspired um, by a publication um, that already exists um, in the Congo Basin called also the State of the Forest, uh, which is developed by uh, OFAC, the Central Africa Forest Observatory, and then over the years has become a well-established um, regional publication that um, it's their place to go to find the most uh, updated information on forests, um, and this is what we are aiming to, um, to do with this publication for East and Southern Africa. Um, well, there have um, 
I will not stop on this. I will go through this in the next slide. But we have already identified certain um, initial topics that are yet to be discussed with you, um, but that uh, perhaps will be touched upon on this publication. And uh, the next step uh, for the development um, of the state of the forest is to get your feedback on these priority themes. Um, so after this event, uh, you will receive in your mailboxes um, a brochure, which there you have a, a, a screenshot of the cover um, that explains a little bit more about um, this publication. Um, it also explains what the proposed priority topics are. And overall, it just gives uh, more information on what are of ESA's expected contributions um, and uh, the objectives of the project. Um, and another um, activity that I would like to highlight, um, we are currently in the process of updating the OFESA website. Um, so if you go to the, to the address that is here, sorry, apps.rcmrd, um, uh, et cetera, um, there you will be able to find all everything that was produced um, during the prototype. We're now in the process to, to simplify everyone um, uh, to have access um, to, to all this information. We're, we're uh, adding the domain of ESA.net, so it's much easier to remember. You can type that and you will have access um, to, to all the information. Um, but we're also in the process of updating everything that is there, so it reflects the new priorities, so it reflects um, what uh, this new office project um, is, aims to do. And of course, also includes a new country that joined um, uh, this new phase. Um, this should be done uh, by, um, by the mid the middle of the year, so by summer. Um, and well, um, we will notify you uh, once it's ready and we would very much welcome your feedback. Um, this website has to be user-centric. We're aiming to have a place where you can easily find information where you can easily navigate and, and, and find exactly what, what you're looking for. Um, and we would, uh, well, at the end, um, we would welcome uh, your comments on, on, on how to always constantly improve this, um, these features um, and how to make it um, more accessible for everyone. Um, and final comment on, on the website is um, we're also adding a new section which uh, will allow us, us to keep you updated on the different activities of, of the project. Um, and we are adding a newsletter or mailing feature um, so you can also get all the latest updates to your mailbox. Um, and well, uh, if I would ask to have a um, takeaway from this presentation, um, it would be that, well, OFESA is not just about producing data, but it's also about making it accessible. Um, it's about making people um, accessing it, helping them and make it um, easy to find and that people can use it for policy making, for their projects, for any kind of, of processes to improve forest governance. Um, so the goal for communications is to, in general, be user centric to meet your needs. Um, to tailor um, to, to, to the users, um, to the people who need uh, this information. Um, so your feedback, your suggestions are always welcome. Um, we can always adapt uh, the communication strategy. We can always come up with new things um, to make sure um, and that you are getting uh, what you need in terms of information. Uh, and back to you, Cookie. Thank you, Arsili, for, for that. And I think that is the end of the second part of the presentations on uh, what the project is all about and uh, how the visibility and the, and the communication will be done. Uh, we'd like to open the floor to any questions uh, or any feedback that, uh, that, that you might be having. Uh, as you prepare maybe your question, there is one uh, comment that uh, from Richard of Kenya and uh, Dagny, they were asking if uh, we could share the presentation. Indeed, yes, the presentation will be shared after, the, uh, after, after this event, as well as the brochure that uh, talks about uh, what the project is all about. There is also another question that came through on, uh, by, by, by Tariku. Can the project work with other institutions other than the one who manage uh, forests? 
Douglas or Eric, uh, would you want to pick that question? Uh, thank you, Ngogi. Yes, yes, yes. The project will actually seek to establish new relationships with other uh, institutions that may not really be uh, in line with forests, but in uh, the field of environment and conservation. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so the floor is open. Uh, anyone who has a question or a comment, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, Gugi, can I start? Um, Please. A bit of, yeah, uh, actually, it's a very good initiative. And of course, I, I, ha I had no information whether this office I was uh, uh, going on uh, since uh, 2016, but uh, it's good to hear. Um, it's good to hear that you have such a, a great initiative. From the name, I was expecting that I think this project was going to uh, support capacity of countries in terms of, you know, you know um, I think um, their uh, capabilities in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, in uh, uh, playing with this spatial data collection and analysis and, uh, you know, training people uh, and so on, so that it will help really very important programs like Red Plus or FLR and so on. So, but from the presentation, uh, what I see is that you want really uh, to focus on streamlining data from countries uh, and, you know, trying to share among, among them. And you want really like a, a, a template that will generate, you know, comparable data among countries. I think the, uh, the issue is that, uh, uh, most countries in Eastern Southern Africa, I believe, like uh, it is true in Ethiopia, that we don't have really the baseline that that is agreeable uh, data in terms of cover or even trends changes uh, in our forest uh, uh, cover. So I think we need to work on that, and uh, we need to have a solid, really support on equipment, staff, uh, and systems and governance. Uh, in place before we, we can really uh, share uh, useful and meaningful data among countries. So I, I am hoping that this, this will be uh, your focus, uh, I hope, in the, in the future. I may have a misunderstanding, but this, this is what I gathered from the presentation uh, pre presentations made so far. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Yetbetu, uh, for that question. Uh, perhaps I could uh, also comment on that. Uh, one of the things that uh, officer will be doing is to directly engage with the countries uh, to identify what uh, are their priorities and the needs that uh, they would want to do. And uh, if one of the areas that uh, the countries would want to, to, to pursue is on, uh, on issues to do with capacity when it comes to spatial data collection and analysis, uh, we'll, work, uh, we'll work on that. Uh, in the earlier presentation from Eric, uh, he indicated also there will be an opportunity of uh, mapping of uh, hotspot areas. Uh, this will give uh, the countries an opportunity to really identify which area would they want to to, to have some sort of uh, ground groundwork being done at the 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 community side. So I think when we shall start uh, the engagement with the countries, then it will be easy for us to identify what uh, will be uh, the needs. Thank you for that question. Um, uh, Kalidan has asked a question on, uh, on, on uh, it's a great initiative that can result uh, to boost uh, the country reporting, especially in the Afalu sector. So the question is that uh, will the project address or support uh, the production or access uh, to new data, new data types or sources? Uh, for example, high resolution uh, satellite data and LIDAR data uh, for citizen science. Uh, Paolo, would you want to take that question, please? Uh, yes. Well, the short answer is yes, but it depends really on the on the on the needs that will be expressed by the the participants and the countries themselves. The idea behind the hotspots is exactly that one. Uh, whether in terms of using citizen science or using the capacities of some new uh, uh, app that can be used by the people themselves locally or by the institutions working locally. And then if there is a need uh, for uh, better satellite images or better analysis, that's exactly where these exchanges should happen between the regional center, ourselves, and the countries themselves. And then we see how those hotspots can feature into the, the overall objectives. 
Thank you for that. Um, um, anyone else who has a question or a comment? Hello, <coughs> Hello yes, please. May I raise question? Yes, please. Google, I think, what is the difference between GMS and uh, going on project monitoring sector? I see a question from Mebrate. Yeah, good question, um, Brate. Um, GMS, um, of course, we know it's uh, the, the project that is EU funded and uh, it's uh, spearheaded by the African Union Commission. Uh, so the forest monitoring looks at uh, uh, at the, the, the IGAD region and uh, it focuses on uh, collecting and uh, collating of uh, information regarding uh, monitoring of forest. Whereas uh, OFESA will be looking at uh, building a wider database and uh, seeing how this information can be shared uh, to various uh, partners, not just in the forest sector, but also in other sectors. And also trying to come up with products that uh, the region can use uh, for decision making, uh, like for example, the state of uh, forest uh, report in East and Southern Africa, as well as uh, trying to harmonize the various data sets that uh, we do have uh, in the region with a focus of uh, also going a little bit uh, into mapping of the hotspot areas uh, that uh, the countries would want to uh, have a clear understanding on what is going on in that particular place. Thank you. Um, Tariq, you had a question? Yes, I had a question. Uh, Please, Edith, 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 the prototype uh, platform is available. so. If so, could you please share the link? We can chase on that uh, to give our comments and our interest on that. Thank you. Thank you. We will share the, the link of the prototype, uh, uh, the link of it when we are sharing the presentation as well as the brochure that uh, we have promised to share. Um, any other question? Uh, may, uh, I'm, I'm Motuma from... Uh, Wondogane College of Course in Natural Sources in Tokyo, the College Dean. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this very nice presentation about the project. Uh, to give you some background, we are working with um, Ethiopian Environment, uh, Forest and Climate Change Commission, especially on uh, national MRV capacity building uh, aspect. And, and um, also we are working on uh, uh, data Spatial data infrastructure. Currently, we are about to sign a data sharing protocol with the Commission. Uh, one very interesting thing which I see uh, from the project is uh, uh, yeah, you are also working in more or less similar things. So, uh, as a forestry college, we are uh, working on we have, we have different programs, GIS, uh, forest monitoring, and also uh, others. Is there a possibility? Uh, to also be part of uh, re really this data sharing and so that we can use it for uh, uh, national capacity building aspects, for research, for education, uh, and the like. Thank you very much. Thank you, Motuma, for that question and uh, the, 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 the feedback and uh, what you do in your institution. Uh, we'll definitely uh, link up uh, with your institution and uh, as well as seeing how uh, the elements of data sharing uh, among the products that uh, will be coming up with uh, will be will be channeled. Thank you for that uh, suggestion and comment. Uh, um, any other question? I'm seeing a comment from uh, Casa. I think it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a on uh, EF agency uh, that they have been doing and the modalities of uh, data sharing. Um, anyone from the Ethiopia Geospatial Agency? Um, Anyone from Ethiopia Geospatial Agency? Or, or Hapte, uh, yes, do you yes. want to elaborate the question? Yes. If you... Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, my name is Mabrate. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mabrate. Yes, yes. Yeah, just uh, as you know, uh, we are working related to geospatial uh, data. We do have uh, a policy. It's just uh, we are going on to complete then uh, we will make it share uh, all available data for future. Thanks. Thank you, Mebrat, for that. Um, I'll take uh, one or two more questions. Uh, there's uh, still room for one or two, one and uh, one and two questions, please. 
Um, may I speak? Please. I'm uh, again Angelo from Ethiopian Environment and uh, Forest Research Institute. Um, <clears throat> from the presentation from uh, the beginning, uh, I heard that uh, the project will uh, look also into wildlife sanctuaries or wildlife areas and then cross-border movements of wildlife that will be really very much important uh, for countries which share um, wildlife areas in common. And also, uh, not only uh, management of forests, but uh, the forest gains from agroforestry, the forest gains from forest landscape restoration, I think, um, could be addressed also in this project, if I am correct. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Agena, for that. Uh, I think uh, you are right uh, in what you have indicated. Uh, these are some of the things that uh, we want to engage uh, the country at a deeper level uh, so that we really understand uh, the various initiatives and the various uh, ways in which we could link up and, uh, and partner. And thank you very much uh, for sharing uh, uh, that comment. Uh, there is room for one more question uh, before we go to the uh, closing remarks. Can I come in? Please, Kasa. Yes, uh, I just would like to really thank all participants and also, you know, the two major institutions for taking up this important initiative. My suggestion would be for, um, you know, participants from, from Ethiopia side to probably meet um, again um, among our service and probably articulate, you know, what we have uh, as experiences to share. I think it is too early, probably they need time to digest it and see the opportunities um, you know, they would get from this project as well. And to also make our expectations you know, aligned with uh, project you know, activities and resources. So my suggestion will be if uh, Dr. Kabru from the commission could uh, actually organize a kind of a separate meeting to to see how we can, um, you know, articulate, you know, what needs to be done in Ethiopia and what Ethiopia could benefit from. Yeah, thank you, Kasa. Thank you, Kasa, for that question, yeah. and uh, we appreciate for the for the comments. Uh, with that, uh, we want to really uh, close the session for question and answer, but we'll of course get an opportunity to uh, talk more uh, offline. Uh, over to you, Myra, for the closing remarks from the EU. Thanks very much. Um, thanks so much for the interesting presentations, and thanks also for the good discussion. I think it was it was really useful. And maybe um, if I can just conclude uh, from what I've been listening to and what uh, what has been said, and maybe my own little additional comments, I just have um, three points that I wanted to make. Maybe three challenges as now as we start implementing the OFESA. Um, first question is really um, the the point that was made by the last speaker from Ethiopia is how can how can Ofesa really make sure that you work to the needs of the nationally mandated institutions? So how can um, uh, it's a challenge to you for you to think about, but to really make sure that if if you interview, for example, Kenya Forestry Service, they will say the Ofesa is responding to my needs and the things that I wanted to know. That's the first challenge. Uh, the second challenge is, is slightly related, which is um, uh, that I, I hope that Ofesa will be able to show how they're directly contributing to measuring the uh, NDC contributions or the AFR 100 contributions, or maybe it's the contributions to SDG 13 and 15 in the particular countries. But I think um, it will be important to, to make sure that the that the points being measured really clearly contribute again to the national priorities. And uh, this does link to, I think, um, uh, what another participant said, which is whether the, uh, the only entry point will be the nationally mandated forestry institutions that were mentioned, or whether in some cases it might need to be broader, you know, for example, um, the, the national in institution or department uh, monitoring the NDC contribution, for example. So I think that will be one more thing to consider. Um, it seems to me that the state of the forest report, the updated state of the forest report, 
with its more participatory approach and the updating of the website are really good starting points. So I'm sure that you'll be well on the way to, to this. But again, it's the second uh, challenge for you to consider. And then um, my final challenge is from the EU side. Um, I think that it will be very good if you can reach out with each EU delegation in each of the five countries and um, make sure they can be involved to, I mean, to the extent they wish to be. But I think um, for our next seven year programming, the, the big sort of uh, buzzword we've been having is that, um, that for our development cooperation, the idea should be policy first. And by policy first, what we mean is that uh, all our development programs should be contributing to uh, policy dialogue and improved policy at the country level, at the partner country level. So um, this means that EU delegations will want to be a bit more involved in, for example, the dialogue with the nationally mandated institutions, uh, for example, at the, the data that you're monitoring, to, to really look at a policy level. I think um, sometimes in the past we've been seen as just someone who, who finances things. <laughs> um, and we don't want we don't want to be seen as that. Uh, of course, the EU is uh, also a political body and really wishes to be a broader partner in the mem in the countries that we're to the five countries that will be part of the OFESA program. So um, again, I think a little bit more involvement, if you can, um, at uh, at each delegation level will, will be very much appreciated. Uh, so those are my challenges. I, I think um, we can also say that there's some very positive uh, elements as well. So uh, obviously you're building on the, the first uh, uh, pilot part of OFESA 1. You obviously have the existing uh, data, which is on the existing website, which is already very good. The existing partnerships. I know, uh, um, of course, C4 and RCMRD have got ex very strong and deep partnerships. Uh, with all the nationally mandated institutions. So um, you're building on some very good basis. And I think that the work you're doing will also be extremely important and a big priority going forward for all the partners involved. So I think you have a very strong starting point and I wish you every success. Thank you, Mayra, and uh, also everyone uh, for, for making time and uh, joining us in this uh, event. We have come to the tail end of it. I uh, would like to wish you a very good day. And uh, as you leave, uh, kindly turn on your camera and uh, safe to say goodbye and uh, wish you a beautiful day ahead. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.